President Biden is back from Israel. Hear what he's expected to tell the country tonight. Warmer temperatures over the next few days, but I'll talk a little bit more about when fall temperatures will return. Plus, you won't believe what police found inside a Norman Brahms. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Morgan Martin. And I'm Ireland Fitzer. We begin tonight with new information from a deadly attack in Israel. U.S. intelligence reports new estimates and the death toll from Tuesday's devastating hospital strike in Gaza. OU Nightly's Noah Mack is in the newsroom with the latest. Noah? Yeah, that's right, Morgan. The U.S. intelligence community is saying the blast killed about 100 to 300 people. And they're still working to confirm the origin of the strike. Israeli officials say the blast came from a misfire from Islamic Jihad, a militant group from the region. Now President Joe Biden threw his support behind that explanation Wednesday. And now the president is back in the United States after his trip to Israel, maintaining full-throated support for the country. We're going to keep Iron Dome fully supplied so we can continue standing sentinel over Israeli skies, saving Israeli lives. While Biden was in Israel, he brokered a deal to get humanitarian support to Gaza from Egypt. And now he's turning to Capitol Hill for further support. He plans to ask for a massive support package for around $100 billion. And tonight, the president will give a formal address from the White House. Reporting live from the newsroom, Noah Mack, OU Nightly. Thank you, Noah. As we enter our third week in a standstill on Capitol Hill, Republicans are still struggling to find enough votes to fill the Speaker of the House seat. Kevin Palmino has the story and more from the Capitol. It's chaos here on Capitol Hill as Republicans are trying to figure out what is going to happen next. That's really the million dollar question, but no one really knows. Representative Jim Jordan this morning announced he wasn't going to seek that third speaker vote on the floor. However, instead he would uh, support a motion that would uh, empower Speaker Pro Tem McHenry. However, he has since paused that and decided that he is going to seek that third vote. Now, we know that in this meeting, emotions were running high, and when we approached Representative, uh, uh, Representative Kevin Hearn to ask him how that went, we were met with silence. He refused to answer questions from the press, but we were able to catch up with Representative Josh Burkeen, a loyalist of Jim Jordan, um, and who said that he's hopeful that Jordan will be able to get those 270 votes on the floor. Okay, so it doesn't have enough uh, support from the Republican Party to... Uh, I can just tell you that I'm opposed and I read the room that there's a large number of people who are concerned about uh, constitutional uh, authority, precedent, and uh, I don't think any of us as conservatives want to see uh, with the majority a loss of, uh, a loss of uh, ability to take the conservative positions. And just to put it into perspective of how unprecedented all of this is, we are hearing that some representatives had even copies of the U.S. Constitution and we're reading through it to figure out again that million dollar question, which is what is next? What's going to happen next? Now, we know that the House is adjourned, but we're expecting that Jim Jordan is going to uh, seek that third floor vote, but we are waiting to hear when that's going to happen. Reporting for Gaylord News from Washington, D.C., I'm Kevin Palomino. Back to you. Thank you, Kevin. At this time, the House remains at a standstill until the Speaker's seat is filled. And shifting over to weather, the sun is out here in Norman and temperatures are in the 80s, warmer than average for this time of year. OU Nightly Meteorologist Carla McCreary joins us live in the studio with the first look at what temperatures we can expect for this weekend. Carlin. That's right, ladies. Temperatures are definitely feeling well above average here in central and western parts of the state. You could take a look right now. Current temperatures, we are in the lower 80s in the central part of the state. But if you take a look in the western part of the state, areas are a little bit warmer. 87 in Elk City, 84 in Woodward, then up in the Panhandle, Guymon, 88 degrees. So a lot of people are feeling quite warmer than what we're used to this time of year. And that's going to continue over the next few days as well till we do get a cool down. But coming up in Maine weather, I'll talk a little bit more about the beautiful weekend ahead and our next chance for some rain ladies. Thank you Carlin. This week Norman police released the body camera footage of a bizarre break in at a Norman restaurant. Oh, Nightly reporter Bailey Coyle is live with the details of the incident. Bailey. Bizarre break in is right. 
It was this Brahms right here at Porter and Robinson where police responded to a call about a man sleeping in the ceiling. Somebody's in the attic. In the attic? An early morning call to police revealed a possible intruder. So they had came into work that morning and just before 6 a.m. to start their day, and they had noticed that there were several ceiling tiles that were out of place that had been broken and had fallen from the ceiling. When officers arrived, they realized this was not a normal break-in. Oh, I got some dummy up in the ceiling. He's up there taking a nap. Due to the placement of the body camera, you cannot see what officers are looking at, but they are attempting to wake up Philip Hickman, who is sleeping in the ceiling. Hey, partner, Norman Police, you better come on out. It took about 30 minutes for Norman Police and Norman Fire to get Hickman down. The guy's laying in the rafters. We can't get him to move or do anything. We got no idea how to get him down. Hickman caused about $1,000 worth of damage to the ceiling, wiring, and camera systems. The damage was caused from them moving around up there, and they moved quite a distance through the store um, and caused the ceiling tiles to fall and the, and the wiring to be damaged. Um, but they didn't actually fall through the ceiling, which is a small miracle. After climbing down the ladder, Hickman was arrested. Face that way. Put your hands behind your back. He was arrested for breaking and entering and malicious injury to property. Now, police say they are still investigating how Hickman was able to get into the ceiling. They also said that they he did not steal anything. He was just sleeping. Reporting live in Norman, Bailey Coyle, OU Nightly. Thanks, Bailey. There's new information tonight in a deadly crash in North Norman. We now know both the names of the men. 34-year-old Ahmed Al-Fatibu and 30-year-old David Renosa died when their cars crashed into each other near Robinson Street and Flood Avenue earlier Tuesday morning. In a new statement from Norman police say they determined Al-Fatibu's vehicle was at a stop when Renosa, traveling east on Robinson, hit the car from behind. The impact causing one vehicle to hit a traffic pole and the other to roll and catch on fire. Both were pronounced dead at the scene. And some shocking food favorites have now been linked to chronic diseases. Coming up, what you should do in order to lower those risks. The story ahead in Health Beat. And if you should live alone or have roommates, find out how your answer could impact your risk for cancer when OU Nightly returns. Duke University made groundbreaking strides on COVID studies. OU Nightly's Darian Curry has that and more in today's Health Beat. Duke University is now helping out with COVID research. Dr. Kevin Saunders and his team at the Duke Human Vaccine Institute share their successfully developed trivalent vaccine. It targets two types of coronavirus, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, and two forms of severe acute respiratory syndrome. The vaccine was developed over three years and tested on mice for overall adaptability. And a new Harvard study suggests eating red meat is linked to the type 2 diet list, list linked to the risk of type 2 diabetes later in life. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition held a study with 200,000 participants eating red meat over a 13 year period. They were found to have an increased 62% risk. Participants who swapped red meat at a meal for nuts or veggies had a 30% reduction risk for diabetes. And adults who live alone are more likely to die from cancer, according to a new study from the American Cancer Society. Among adults 18 to 64, around 2.5% of the 115,000 people studied died. And just 1.6% of more than the 350,000 people living with others died. Researchers are unsure why, but they think it may be linked to loneliness and social isolation. And I have good news for anyone hitting snooze in the morning. New research suggests brief snooze periods helps improve cognitive functioning and can boost your mood. Ladies. Thanks, Darian. Coming up, the Norman community is working to make sure everyone can enjoy a Thanksgiving meal. Find out the ways that you can help give back right after this. And a beautiful weekend ahead, along with some fall temperatures. I'll have that and more coming up. Back to New Center, let's try this again. Former Donald Trump attorney Sidney Powell has pleaded guilty today in Georgia. She's convicted of six misdemeanor counts of conspiracy to commit election interference. Powell admits she had a role in the breaching election systems in Georgia County in 2021. Fulton County prosecutors have granted her six years of probation. But in return, Powell has to testify in future trials against others. 
While its competitors' revenues are on the rise, American Airlines is down on their third quarter revenues, showing a loss of $545 million. Fort Worth-based American says the reason is, in part, rising pilot salary costs. Also, it claims it didn't choose the most lucrative routes. Delta and United showed a large revenue growth. American is now going to rethink its routes and choose ones that make it more money. And George Clooney and other A-list stars are offering to pay millions of dollars in union dues to end the ongoing actor strike. Clooney met with SAG Afron union leaders Tuesday and proposed they remove the cap on membership dues. Clooney says this will bring more than $50 million to their union each year and over $150 in the next three. According to Variety magazine, the proposal wasn't well perceived by the union. And Scholastic says elementary schools can now choose to exclude books that contain content related to racism and LGBTQ identities this year during the Scholastic Book Fair. And we have a beautiful day across campus today. Beautiful blue skies out on the live look of the South Oval. Current temperatures, we are in the lower 80s, a very low humidity, and that's something that we can definitely think because of the cold front that just moved through our area last night. It was fairly weak, so it didn't change our temperatures too much. So temp that's what is putting our temperatures across the state in the lower 80s. Once again, areas in the western part of the state you could see are a little bit higher in temperature. 87 in Elk City, out in the Panhandle, Guymon, 88 degrees and Woodward 84 and once again that humidity is fairly low so it is feeling fairly dry outside today and that is something that is contributing to the drought that we are having in areas of Oklahoma. We are ranging from extreme levels to abnormal levels across the state. Areas in the northern part of the state you could see are in an extreme level as well as down in southwestern Oklahoma near Lawton. So that's definitely something that we are watching but we do have a little bit of relief on the way with the precipitation outlook showing that precipitation values will be above normal in the next month or so. So that is something that will help the drought especially in areas of the state. Now looking ahead into the next week or so, we aren't looking at any rain chances, except we do have a rain chance on Tuesday, 60% right now that we are tracking with remnants of Hurricane Norma that could possibly make its way up into the state, bringing us some extra moisture into the earlier parts of next week. Now for the future cast, you can see timing it out for you. We are remaining mostly clear and then by kickoff time, for Saturday with the game against UCF, you can see a few clouds here and there as the day continues, and those are going to stick around, especially into Sunday. But then Monday is when we are going to start to see that rain start to move in the area. That's what we are going to start to track into the earlier parts of next week. Once again, it is fairly far out for us to track how much rain exactly we will be getting with this. But once again, Tuesday is when we will also be seeing a lot of moisture possibly. Now, temperature outlook is something that we are also watching because temperatures are going to are projected to be below normal, especially especially in parts of the northern United States down into our area here in Oklahoma over the next month or so. As for your lows tonight, we are in the upper 50s, so we are a little bit above average, and that's another trend that we are also seeing for our highs tomorrow. Temperatures are going to be in the upper 80s, so a little bit warmer than what we did see today. And for the seven day, you can also see we are going to start to cool down just a little bit into this weekend into the lower 70s. And then next week, we're going to start to see those fall temperatures return along with some rainfall that is going to be possible. So if we want to enjoy that warm weather, we better do it this weekend, right? This weekend's perfect. I mean, the homecoming game, it'll be a great weekend to be outside, make some plans. Perfect. And I know those cooler temperatures will swing around, so thank you, Carlin. And as we wait for the temperatures and leaves to fall, Norman Food and Shelter is starting their effort to give back to the community. Thanksgiving for most people is a festive holiday spent eating with family, but not everyone has that same luxury. Norman Food and Shelter has been solving that problem for decades. For about 30 years, Food and Shelter has been providing a Thanksgiving meal to really anybody who needs a place to go for Thanksgiving Day. Over the years, it's grown so much that we've had to move that event to Norman High School. So we rent out the high school and serve about a thousand people that day. As the reach continues to grow, so does the shopping list. And the first item on the list this year, 100 turkeys. Now behind me, you can see the Food and Resource Center, as well as a small portion of the Food and Shelter campus. But with all this space and only a small number of people on staff, Norman Food and Shelter looks to volunteers to help give back to the community. I think everybody should come and serve at some point. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a great place to be involved with, and it's, yeah, I think everybody at some point in time should come and do a shift or two and probably realize how much that you enjoy it and want to come back again. Norman Food and Shelter will be asking for donations all month long, starting to prepare for the big feast in early November. You can sign up to volunteer or make a donation on their website. 
Here's Level Holtz, OU Nightly. If you can donate, food and shelter is located at 201 Reed Avenue in Norman. And coming up on OU Nightly, OU Volleyball is looking to end a bad streak. OU Nightly Stone Weber has more in sports coming up next. Hello, I'm Stone Weber, and it's time for sports. Football is back in the Sooner State as the UCF Knights head to Norman this weekend for its first matchup ever with the Sooners. Freshman safety Peyton Bowen was named to the on three midseason true freshman All-American team as he has shined in just six games with the Crimson and Cream. And the Sooners, they're ranked sixth in the AP poll and are in first place in the Big 12 at 6-0. Now going into Saturday, UCF has a dynamic offense, but for defensive lineman Ethan Downs, the Sooners' energy needs to be as high as it was in the Red River rivalry. Realistically, it's our goal every single week. And uh, it, it showed up big on, on the OU Texas game. We got physical to them. We're ready to go. And that's how we got to be every week. And we haven't played our best yet. So that's our goal is to keep getting better, keep chopping wood, and keep stacking days. OU softball had their second battle series exhibition of the fall last night, and senior catcher Kinsey Hansen had a night with this two-run homer in the third. She went four of five in the game, and second baseman Tiare Jennings knocked in two of her own as Team 1 outscored teams 2 and 3, 7 to 6. Softball returns to the Diamond Monday, October 23rd to take on Seminole State at 6 p.m. Moving to the hardwood, OU Volleyball returns tonight at McCaslin Fieldhouse after getting swept 3-0 in their last match against Texas. Excuse me, Kansas. The 6-10 and 10 Sooners have lost eight in a row and are just 1-5 at home. They'll host the Jayhawks rival, the Kansas State Wildcats, tonight and tomorrow in search of their first conference win. Tip-off tonight is at 6 p.m. And a battle of unbeaten teams highlights the Thursday night slate for Oklahoma High School football as the 8-0 Carl Albert Titans take on the 7-0 Guthrie Blue Jays. Carl Albert's led by 2025 OU commit Kevin Sperry and 2024 running back commit Xavier Robinson. And week 7 of NFL football kicks off in the Big Easy tonight as the Jaguars take on the New Orleans Saints. Former Sooner Anton Harrison, he balled out last week for Jacksonville, allowing zero QB pressures on 37 pass-blocking snaps. And over to the baseball diamond, the Houston Astros beat the Texas Rangers last night 8-5 in Game 3 of the ALCS, and the Astros look to even the series tonight. First pitch is at 7.05. Morgan, Ireland, back to you. Thank you, Stone. When OU Nightly returns, a game of basketball turns alarming at a North Carolina school. Find out how students jumped into action when a student collapsed after the break. I'm Colson Pocock at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Noble Police say they, say they have a suspect in custody in a deadly shooting last week. Detectives say Dariel Omar Fernandez killed his father and injured his brother in their home on October 11th. Prosecutors are charging him with first-degree murder and shooting with intent to kill. Fernandez, Fernandez is being held in the Cleveland County Jail without bond. Morgan, Ireland, back to you. Thanks, Colson. A terrifying situation unfolding at a school in North Carolina. Thankfully, two teens were at the right place at the right time. Now, during open gym, an 18-year-old basketball player who goes by DJ went into sudden cardiac arrest. Two exchange students then sprang into action to perform CPR, and after going in and out of consciousness, DJ was breathing again. Now, the pair from Poland and Australia say the experience was emotional, and all three now share a special bond. And on a lighter note, here closer to home, homecoming weekend activities will kick off tomorrow on campus. OU Nightly Meteorologist Carla McCurry joins us in the studio with the last look at temperatures this weekend ahead of homecoming. That's right, ladies, especially this weekend, a great time to be outside considering we do have those fall temperatures on the way. Friday and Saturday, we're going to be fairly warm. It's going to feel very comfortable outside with temperatures in the lower 80s. If you're heading out to the homecoming parade or the raw rally temperatures, once again, we're going to warm up into the mid 80s, 85 by 4 p.m., but then we're going to start to cool back down into the upper to mid 70s. And on the seven day, you can see we are going to start to cool down just a little bit into next week, and that's what we're looking ahead on, ladies. Thank you, Carlin, and thank you for watching OU Nightly. I'm Ireland Fitzer. And I'm Morgan Martin. Be sure to catch us on OU Nightly weekdays live at 4.30. Good night.